Um, good afternoon to everyone. Our guest speakers don't need any introduction to those in real estate. Um, they are uh, well-known personalities. However, I will indulge them very slightly by just highlighting some of their background. Uh, Bill is the head of Aries uh, Real Estate Group, sits on their board of directors. He joined in 2013 from Area Property Partners, having a background in, in finance. A graduate of Harvard with a BA in Social Studies, he's also got an MBA in Business Management from the University of Pennsylvania. He's a trustee of Impetus, which is a charity focused on improving education and employment for disadvantaged youth. Uh, Jonathan is the Managing Director of Pairs Property, which is an integral part of the William Pairs Group, one of Britain's largest property companies with a reported six billion pounds of property assets. Uh, Jonathan is a fellow of the RICS and has been giving strategic advice to the family since he joined in 2009, prior to which he was the group director at Asda Property. Um, I think we've got 75% of people voting, so I'm just gonna um, let people know. So the, the question was, when, when will we be returning to the office without social distancing? Um, and it's quite a varied response, which is what I've expected. Uh, and that just will show you really how um, people have a variety of views about where this pandemic is going to lead us. So 12% of people think before June 2021, 25% of people think between July and September, 35%, which is the biggest, between October and December, 17% between January and March next year, and 10% of you think it will be actually after March, oh. I mean, after April 2022. So a whole variety of different views there. Jonathan. <laughs> Coming to you first. Um, have you been enjoying working from home? And, um, and does the feedback from our listeners compare with your own thinking? I think it's very challenging working from home is my view. I know, I know you could say, well, I'm a dinosaur and you know, you have to listen to your employees. I've got a num we've got a number of people at pairs who are literally, you know, on the phone to us who are single living in flats who are desperate to come in and who are do come in because they say they can't work from home to our London office. Um, however, you know, I meet people who love working from home because they say, I'm not talking about in my organisation, other people who say they can't stand the people they work with. So it's great to be sitting in and not, not have to see them for a year. So <laughs> it, it's mixed, but I do believe there will be a return to the office. You know, there might be a bit more flexes. Some people might be able to work from home one day a week, but I do see a return over the next, you know, whether it's three months or a year uh, is going to happen. I think people will be very keen to get back into the office when it's safe to do so. Okay. And Bill, same question to you then. Have you, have you enjoyed working from home and are you surprised by the results of, of the poll? Richard, I enjoyed the novelty of working from home until about early August. Um, I probably traveled too much for work and being involuntarily grounded has freed up a lot of time for me. Uh, much of it taken up by Zoom calls for work, but but in some ways, the quality of my life improved. I'm not surprised at the poll uh, because I focus on the fact that most people think we'll be back to work this, this year. And I would say that working from home is a great backup plan, but it isn't where I would start. I, 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 I can imagine very few careers that can flourish and very few teams that can flourish with people not being together, working as teams. We're not just economic animals, we're social animals too. And the unspoken body language that goes on in a boardroom, in a one-to-one, -one, by the water cooler, by the tea, is as important as anything that's written in a document. So I think the technology has been fantastic, but it's not, it's not a long-term sustainable way to, to be. Um, so in terms of productivity, then, have you seen productivity uh, fall as a result of, you know, the third lockdown we're in now? And how are you combating that? I don't think our productivity has fallen, but I think that malaise has increased. And I think that if everybody is honest, we're all feeling the emotional flat tire of this prolonged pandemic. And I, I look at the teams and I am not concerned that they aren't producing because they are, 
but I'm concerned about exactly what Jonathan touched upon, which is people with young children, and let's say that both spouses are working and the child care's fallen through, or single people who are either sharing a flat with roommates and it's claustrophobic, or are very isolated, people who have loved ones far away. I have an 85-year-old father in the States I haven't seen for a year. Uh, so I, I'm concerned about the human cost, but I haven't seen it translate into poor uh, working performance. So we do read and hear a lot in the media of negativity about COVID and the impacts. And uh, are we all going to go back to the way life was before? But I guess the question there is, is that perhaps there are some positives that we're not really focusing on at the moment. We're all focused on the negative, or there's been a lot of focus on negatives. Um, besides finding that flexibility in your approach and spending more time with your family and not having to travel so much, Bill, what are the other benefits that you think will come out, we'll be able to look back on and go, actually, there were some benefits of COVID. Are there any, is there anything else that you think you want to highlight there? And, and I'll ask Jonathan the same question. It's sort of it's sort of an on the one hand and on the other because I think that there will be a demob happy, you know, uh, and we've all missed going out to restaurants and to movies and to shows or or to football games. So I think that there'll be a a flurry of that. But but I think that it, it simplified our lives in some way and probably if we're you know for, for some of us focused us on what's really important and who's really important. Just just going back a bit, I think the last year has just been horrid. I mean, forget about the economy a I minute, mean, just from a health point of view. I mean, really, really horrid. And look, obviously I feel very sorry, sorry for people that have lost loved ones, you know, it's just been absolutely, you know, horrible. But the people I feel most sorry for, probably children, because it's just not in their DNA what they've had to do in the last year. You know, they're meant to be at school mixing with their friends and having a good time. So that, that's just, I think, been horrible for children. I mean, adults can put up with it and, you know, the mental health issues is, is horrible, but I just feel, you know, sympathy, a lot of sympathy for children up and down the country. So, you know, I guess, and obviously there's been an environmental advantage to it, I guess, with less cars and traffic on the road. So that in the interim period has helped a bit as well. It's not, I, I can't see too many advantages to it, Richard, unfortunately. Oh, that's okay. You, you, you touched on mental health there, which is, you know, now on the agenda for a lot of companies. And, you know, in my opinion, um, it, it is going to be a significant repercussion of the lockdowns. Yes. Uh, we haven't even, you know, it, it, it's really now starting to come for, forward and people are talking about it quite rightly. Um, um, what actions are you taking um, to to deal with the issue and Bill I'll, I'll come to you first before coming back to Jonathan. So we've also at PEZ we've been making a concerted effort during lockdown and during the last year to talk to everyone so we're doing that by we have an HR department so we ask our head of HR to phone everyone up once a fortnight to check they are okay um, or not um, and then we Senior directors at PEARS are also going down the line of doing exactly the same thing as well, speaking to people, whether it's by Zoom, you know, socially distanced meeting people. And we have had a few, you know, there's been a number of issues, but going forward, I, you know, the ramifications of this mental health, it hasn't, hasn't really, you know, obviously it's all bubbling, but that's what we're trying to do. Very similar to what Jonathan has said. Um, we, we've worked hard on both group engagement and individual engagement. So I'm working my way down the organizational chart, calling people, having one-to-ones and just checking in on everybody and letting them know that we're there. Uh, Aries employs 1400 people worldwide and guaranteed everybody continued employment during this period. And also if, uh, if somebody's spouse lost work and there was financial hardship, there were confidential hardship loans made available to, to employees. Uh, and then we've tried to also have more interactions. So the firm has a town hall meeting. I know that sounds like a very American concept, but it, it works sometimes with inside speakers, sometimes with outside speakers. At times it feels like maybe we've over communicated because people are busy. You know, I think that uh, 
the time that people spent going to lunch, grabbing coffee, popping into John Lewis is now replaced with one Zoom call after another. So we have to be careful not to over communicate, uh, but we've really made a concerted effort to keep people engaged and, and involved. Um, so Bill, I mean, what, what's your best and your worst deal? Um, to summarize them, summarize them and see if we can help some of the people on, on, on the call here to understand um, how, you, how you've dealt with the good and the bad. I think the best numeric deal we ever did was we did a sale lease back with a large German retailer named Metro. Now, when, when Europe began to liberalize after the fall of the Berlin Wall, Poland was on Germany's doorstep. Many German companies went in there. Metro, which is a big retailer, big cash and carry business, big consumer electronics, went in there and there were no shopping centers. So they actually built shopping centers, put their stores in it, and then master leased the, the mall, the internal mall. So they developed this big portfolio, it was on their balance sheet. The rating agency said you had too much real estate, so we bought it. We did a 20 year sale lease spec with Metro. The covenant was triple B. We had rental bumps and we did it the day Poland went into the EU. On the back of rental bumps, we were able to do a refinance. On the back of cap rate compressions, we sold the 50% interest. On the back of lower interest rates and future rental bumps, we refinanced again. And finally, we sold it to an international consortium and we did some expansion. So it was the gift that kept giving. And I think it was a 10x. Okay. Nice. So we had income, covenant, growth, compression, everything worked well, right? They come around once a decade. The I'm worst still waiting, deal, by the way. The, the, worst, the worst deal we ever did in the mid in 2005, 2006, everybody was very excited about the emerging markets. And we were able to buy an absolute cracking site from Carrefour on the road from the Istanbul airport into town. And we teamed up with Multi, which was a pan-European retailer who had a, a shopping center company that had a great Turkish operations. And we got zoning approval and we built, we built a shopping center that had a Carrefour, all singing, all dancing. I promise you, I promise you as good as anything as Westfield bought. And then we got caught in a political crossfire because the political party of the municipality which granted us the planning consent was the opposition party to Erdogan's party and Erdogan controlled the metropolitan government. They alleged on spurious grounds that we had overbuilt and they said we had to demolish. We lost every appeal. The US ambassador would not get involved. Oh, what happened is basically we had to give an office block. It was a shopping center with an office block as payment in lieu of compensation for, for zoning violations to the government. So we were shaken down by the tune of 40 million euros by the Turkish government. And we lost all our money. So, you know, my comment, I've invested in India, I've invested in Russia, I've invested in Ukraine, I've invested in Turkey. I don't want to insult anybody. But when you hear the phrase emerging market, forget the word market, only focus on the word emerging. Probably the best financial deal, I'm just thinking, so joking aside, probably the best financial deal I've ever done. I mean, clearly, was probably signing a contract with the Pears family, right, 13 years ago, right? <laughs> Um, but I haven't done a better financial deal, than, so, so that's probably been the best one. Um, out the actual individual deals that probably I've ever bought that on, on a return basis were probably in 98, I think it was, I bought the old Cushman's building, Helium Baker building in St George Street in Maddox Street. And that's why it's so important to be in the office. I was walking around Hanover Square, because my office, my office was there. I bumped to an agent who I knew very well, who worked at Jones Lang at the time. He said, Jonathan, nice to see you. I'm selling a building on the corner there to, he told me who he said to a fellow called, everyone will know him, to a guy called Nigel Ross, for four million pounds, so it was 20,000 square feet. What do you think? I said, well, I'd pay four and a quarter. He said, but he'll do it in five days. I said, well, I'll do it in two. He said, are you being serious or is this a joke? So I said, no, we'll do it in two days. We got Cushman's, we did a deal, surrendered their lease within about two years. 
we got vacant possession, we got planning. I think we spent £6 million building it over a two-year period, so we're in for 10. And then we let it out for £2 million a year. So you can work that out. Your yield on cost is 20% and it's worth 4%. So that was probably the best individual property deal. On losing, doing deals, you know, you're asking for our worst deal. Look, I think in life it's about getting the big, look, done as few small ones that haven't gone terribly well. Somehow the big ones have worked out well. And that's the most important thing to make sure the big ones work out well. My biggest thing about when I look at any deal is the first thing I look at is how am I going to lose money on this deal? I'm not really interested how much you're going to make. It's about how am I going to, what am I going to lose and how much am I going to lose? So one of my best programs, this number is watching Warren Buffett's documentary. And his first rule is he puts it very, and everything in very simple language. You know, he's not perfect. He has a very, you know, his personal life is very complicated. But his first rule is just don't lose money. Forget about the upside. And I think he's right. Yep. Just before we, there's a couple of questions that have come in. So just in terms of digital, um, which you've just touched on, I mean, how do you see that evolving in the real estate market? Because we're, we're the slowest to react generally to, to significant change, uh, whether that be using agents or transacting through uh, blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. How, how are you seeing digital impact on real estate? Well, Richard, we won't need to use estate agents anymore, will we? Um, Which is why I got out of it, Jay. Which is why you got out of it. Um, the good news is, obviously, someone like Stephen Lewis is on mute at the moment. So yeah, thank God. I've muted shouting him. Shouting at people. Yeah, you should have muted all the agents. No, no, no. It's all about, look, real estate's all about people, right? And about relationships, on a serious note. So, I mean, yeah, digital is important. It will play its part um, moving forward. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe Bill can answer it, but, you know, a bit better than I can. So, I, you know, Jonathan, I don't, I don't know the insides and outs of, of your business. My business, our business is different. We, we, you know, we are running investment funds on behalf of global investors. So we have lots of legal entities. We have lots of financial statements. We have lots of investor reports. So we are making a very big push into the digitalization uh of of our operations now ultimately you have to know you have to have a good agent it is a people business you have to see the property there's the intangible bit of it but then there's the business of the business and we are uh investing a lot of time in the digitalization of investment proposal memorandum pipeline financial statements VAT payments, quarterly reporting. We hired somebody who's focused on this full time and I spent an hour with him trying to catch up on what he was doing and the flow charts that he has created and the dashboards he has created and the automation of processes that he's created are profound and they're, they're, they're going to create savings for our organization and they're going to create efficiencies for our, our organization. So. Um, you know, my holy grail, sorry, you'll see the lahavdil, it's, 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 it's a borrowed metaphor. Um, it, our holy kiddush cup is the attribution analysis, where you can have a software where you can look an investor in the eye and say, 30% of the return was yield compression, 40% was rental growth, 20% was leverage. You, you know, that the, the ability to disaggregate returns and to say to an institutional investor, this is the secret of the Aries sauce or the Blackstone sauce or the Starwood sauce or the Pear sauce is something that we are we are trying to do. And that that's an investment in technology. Um, I'm going to pass back to, to Rabbi Yossi uh, for some closing remarks um, and, uh, and, and, and thanking you and all the listeners. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much, uh, Bill and uh, Jonathan and Richard, for a wonderful job on behalf of all our viewers, who I'm sure um, we held the crowd, you held the crowd, um, again, uh, enlightened, certainly lots of stuff to go away with. But just a final question. Um, a few months ago, I asked Morris Levy, the chairman of Publicis, uh, he was interviewed by the Financial Times and they asked him how he would like to be viewed by others. And uh, he mentioned the word mensch. As a matter of fact, the Financial Times called him up to ask how you spell the word mensch. Um, so, Bill, first you, 
and then Jonathan and Richard, if you want to come in, what's your definition of the word mensch? I'm happy to get, I mean, a, a, a decent individual. That's how I would, what I mentioned is a decent individual. So we'll listen to people, give proper and honest advice and yeah, someone and it gives back. It's not just about taking, because I think we're all, as I keep saying, we'd be, but I mean, I know Bill reasonably well. Um, I think Bill and I have been, yeah, we work hard, but we've been lucky as well. And if you've been lucky, I think you must give back. And I think that's the critical thing. To do the right thing, the right way. Okay, okay. Bill, thank you, always succinct. But why um, didn't you ask me first? Because now I'm really in trouble. Because I think, <laughs> I think both, uh, every, you know, listening to people, doing the right thing, and just, just being available for other people, I think is, is, is a real, a real skill. Uh, and it's very, very difficult today, especially in the world where we're all much busier than we ever thought we would be working from home and being stuck on Zoom. So uh, I, I agree with both Bill and, and Jonathan. Um, and just, yeah, just to, just to try your very hardest to help every single person that you come across because there's a reason for it. Thank you very much again for joining us. We wish you all well. And as our closing line, we like to conclude with may we share only good news with each other. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.